We've seen some different things here in Germany that seem like things that are familiar to us that we have back in the US, but we've realized that things are not always what they seem. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel to another video that we've been excited to do because this one has been on our minds a lot because we've made a lot of assumptions about certain things that we see here that we feel like we've seen in the US or you kind of come here and you just assume these things looking at certain things. We've heard a lot of other Americans making the same assumptions that we have made who have either come and visited us or have just been around us and we've kind of overheard what they've been saying. So we've been wanting to share these things and kind of clear up some of the assumptions and show that a lot of things that we may have in the US or that we think we know already and you see here are completely different things and are not at all what you would possibly expect them to be. So for this video, rather than doing it behind this desk and just talking to you about what we've seen, we're gonna go out and hit the streets and show you in person some of these things and explain them a little bit more. So let's go check these things out. <laughs> So the day that we moved to Ramstein, we were exploring our new city and walking around and we came across this building and saw this sign and thought, oh, this sounds like a really good burger restaurant. We're really excited to try it. And since then, we've been in this square and heard many other Americans say the same thing. But to our disappointment, it is not a burger restaurant. But this word burgers with the umlaut on top means citizen. So this is what we would consider a community center where there are lots of plays, concerts, and different community events. So it sounds like a really neat place that we are now excited to try this as well. We're not sure if the term Haus de Burgers is a term that each city has for their community center, but we have seen it multiple other places. Whenever we've had a lot of people come visit us also, they think that whenever we're walking around Europe that we're seeing tons of cannabis shops for marijuana all over the place because they see a green cross all over the place. But what they don't know is that it's not the same symbol as what it represents in the United States. In the United States, if you see a green cross, it normally is representing a cannabis shop or dispensary. And so you'll see those a lot in like California or Colorado. But when you're in Europe, that is kind of the European symbol for a pharmacy. So what actually people are seeing all over the place are pharmacies with the green cross glowing. Today, it is actually closed, it's on the weekend, so the Green Cross isn't on right here, but I'll come back during the week and I'll get a video of it with the green lights showing so you can actually see what it looks like. Never mind. We walked right around the corner and there was one that was open and it actually turned on. But if also if you're ever in Europe and you need some medications or something to help get over headaches or something, look for the Green Cross and go there and don't worry, it's not weed. Also, if you do see that symbol, another way that you know that it isn't a marijuana shop is because marijuana is illegal in Germany. You can get it in some kind of medical instances if you need it for medicinal purposes, but for the most part, it is illegal. And so you can guarantee those are not marijuana shops. There have been many times when we've been driving through downtown, really narrow, crowded streets, looking for parking, driving all over. But then we finally come to a parking sign and we see parking fry and think, yay, free parking, that's great. But then much to our dismay, we pull in and you have to pay because here when it says parking fry, it doesn't mean that it's free parking, it means there are spaces available. Whereas in the US, that would usually mean free parking. You don't have to pay for it but unfortunately that's not what it means here. And usually you'll also see signs around the parking garage that says how many spaces are available. So you know that means there is free parking as in available parking. So we are waiting here right now in front of this parking garage to see what happens when this two goes down to zero, meaning there are no more free parking spots. I'm trying to see if this sign over here will now say not fry or something like that. Oh, there's tons going in now. Yes. Five. Oh, there's more than five going in. I think we might finally have a moment. And here are three more trying to go in. Eight, let's go. No, wait, but tons just <laughs> went in. Tons just went in. 
Oh, tons are coming out. Tons are coming out. Oh, uh, geez, it's not looking good. Uh, is it went on a seven? No, but it was an eight. That was the deal. This is how I love to spend my Saturdays. One. Oh. It's almost there. That one person's turning in too. This is gonna be our one. This is what we've been waiting for. See, one just went in, but I think two are coming out. Dang, it went up to five. <laughs> so close. So our deal was when the sign gets all the way back up to eight, we don't have to stand here watching this sign anymore to see if it changes and I get to go get coffee. So we're gonna go now. We don't know what it's gonna happen whenever it gets down to zero. One of the coolest things about visiting Europe is the architecture that you're confronted with here. Like for instance in Germany, the half timber frame buildings and the massive cathedrals all really are cool to see. But unfortunately during World War II, a lot of it was actually destroyed during massive bombing raids. And in some cities like this one that we're in right now, which is Kaiserslautern in Germany, about 60 to 85% of the city was actually flattened and lost during the war. And other major cities like Frankfurt were further destroyed. Almost 100% was destroyed. And Frankfurt's a really famous example of the struggle that then they had to figure out after the war of how to rebuild. They were confronted with, do we rebuild it to make it look like what it used to be, or do we start from scratch and do more modern building? And so Frankfurt Old Town used to look like really incredible and was world famous for their half timber frame buildings all over the place. And they kept that whenever they reconstructed the old square. And you can see that whenever you visit just beautiful tall buildings that are all half timber all around, but then the rest of the city is fairly modernized. So as you're moving through the cities here in Germany, it's sometimes can be hard to figure out which of these buildings are actually original and pre-World War II even, and which ones have been reconstructed to just look like what it used to be. This square right here that we're in, it looks really old and really neat. I don't know if it is, or maybe it's rebuilt to look that way, but either way, it's still impressive no matter what, and it's really cool to get to travel through here and see that kind of architecture. So we just got back from the grocery store and we bought an item that we've seen and we brought it back here so we can actually show you guys what it actually is. So this is something that I think is the most interesting thing that we have seen in Germany. They have these eggs that this whole time we've been seeing them on the shelves and I keep thinking, why do they have Easter eggs on the shelves year round? This just doesn't make sense. But what we've learned is that these are hard boiled eggs, the color is the protective coating so that it can be preserved on the shelves and also just to stand out as a marketing technique. So I've thought they were super interesting this whole time. This is the first time we've bought them. And so I kind of wanted to crack into one and make sure what we've heard is true. So the protective coating doesn't have to be that color, but that is just kind of fun that they're colored that way mm -hmm. to distinguish themselves from the rest of the eggs. Okay, let's see. Please be boiled. It is. Okay, let's see. It is a boiled egg. Oh, no. Tore off some pink of the bottom of it. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> but we've heard that this is a popular kind of snack or lunchtime item that a lot of people will get. And so now we have six Easter eggs, hard boiled eggs that we're going to have sitting on our shelves. I really can't stand eggs. So these are going to come down to Aubrey to eat all of I'm these. Eat all of these this week. But we hope that you learned a lot of different things from this video of things that you've seen or maybe you haven't seen yet. But whenever you come here, you won't be surprised by whenever you see these things. And don't just assume that everything you see is exactly what you would think it is or even just because you've seen it in the US. You never know, it could be something different. And we're really excited as we live here longer to keep learning more and more things. I'm sure there are many other things that we are assuming are one thing but are actually something different. So if you're German and you're watching this video, on our last video I asked you to leave comments in German so I can practice my German. That has been a huge help for me in learning my German. So if you know any other things that maybe Americans don't really know a German thing that you know of that you would like to introduce us to, 
Leave those in the comments and leave it in German. Let me continue to practice my German. Y'all have been so helpful. If you like this video, also please hit the like button and also subscribe so that you can keep up with more of our adventures. We would love to have you traveling with us. Bye. <laughs>